God has given us a gift today, hasn't he? Just a little scattered here in my thinking. Uh, Marilyn Rollins is just having trouble. Marilyn has been through so many different things in her life. Um, I don't know how many different surgeries, so forth. She lives in constant pain and is, is struggling with us this morning. I just want to lift her up in prayer for a moment. Would you with me? Father, we're grateful that Marilyn felt good enough to be here this morning. But Father, she's hurting right now. We pray to you bless her. We pray to you surround her and lift her up. She'd be a zeal and the people around her that they would be able to provide what she needs. <clears throat> Father, this world is difficult. You did not make this to be heaven on earth. You made this to be earth. This is where we start. And Father, we know that it's broken. We know that there are hardships, there are hurts, there is loneliness, there is sin, there is evil, Father, in this world. But you've put us here to be salt and to be light in this dark place. Father, I pray that you would give us the strength to do that, to be that for your sake. We trust in you to get us through. We trust in your power. We trust in your strength. We trust in the power of your spirit living in us. And Father, we pray through your love and power that you would comfort Marilyn right now. But that you would lift us up and help us to see the, the, the name that you've given us, the honor that you've bestowed on us to call us your children in the midst of all this chaos. God, we thank you and we love you. Guide us, Father, to see you, to know you more deeply to rejoice in your presence even though things are hard. God, let us see you and give you the praise. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> this world is not an easy place. There's a reason that heaven looks so good because this world doesn't always look that good. And yet this is all we know and so sometimes we trust in this world. Sometimes we think, that this world is what it's all about. And God has put us here for a reason. We're not here just to spend our time. We're here to do something for God's sake. But sometimes it's unclear on what we're supposed to do. Has anybody ever gotten lost? Anybody ever gone bad directions? Yeah? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> How many of you use GPS these days? You got that in your car, got that on your phone? You got that someplace, and you punch in your GPS. Isn't that nice? We don't have to trust in people anymore. And yet, and yet, I hear stories come back. There was a woman on the East Coast just a, just a couple months ago. She's following her GPS to a certain location and ended up driving into the ocean. I want to say, look up. <laughs> But she said it was dark, it was night, and she was just going down the road, and suddenly, boom, 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 splash. She said she was just following her GPS, waiting for the directions. Sometimes we want somebody to give us directions, but what happens when they give us the wrong directions? Just talking to a woman. Why were these both women? I don't know. I think it's a coincidence. <laughs> Must be a coincidence. This woman lived in Lakewood. Everybody know where Lakewood is? She was going to Cerritos. You know where Cerritos is? Right next door to Lakewood. <clears throat> she got punched in the address on her GPS and started following it. She didn't stop until she got to Pasadena. <laughs> until she finally stopped and pulled over and said, this can't be right. I'm going, you live in Lakewood. You know where Cerritos is. But she was following the directions of her GPS. It must be right. They said it was right. We don't always get good information, do we? We don't always get the right directions. <clears throat> and I think that's one of the reasons I love the story of the wise men so much. The wise men that came to Jesus to come visit him, 
These strange people from a strange land, we don't know who they are, or where they were from, or what their mission was. We know very little about them except that they saw a star and decided to follow this star and understand it wasn't from like from Lakewood to Cerritos. It was about 900 miles that they had to travel on foot or camelback. But they saw a star in the sky. If you saw a bright star in the sky, would you follow it? <laughs> no. No. Well, uh, we're wiser than that today, aren't we? We wouldn't follow a silly star, and yet, these guys were not called silly. They were not called foolish. They were called wise. They were the magi. They were the wise people, the people who studied these things. We don't know exactly who they were, but Matthew knew who they were, and Matthew loved the story of the magi. He's the only gospel that records the magi. He's the only one who tells the story about these kings or these philosophers or these scientists or whoever they were who saw this star and they associated that star with a, with a passage back in the Old Testament. Seems a little bit obscure, but talks about a star rising in Jerusalem. Or rather, Israel. The star is going to rise in Israel. This is Numbers 24. And it's going to be a ruler and the scepter will rise. And they saw this bright star that they hadn't seen before. And they said, that's unusual. We better give that some special attention. Where did that come from? What does that mean? Is God speaking to us? Maybe he is. Let's look in his word. They probably came from the area of Babylon. Now we think of Babylon, if, if you've studied the Bible very much, those were the bad guys. Those were the guys who, with Nebuchadnezzar, came in and, and killed most of the Jews, took a lot of them away into captivity for 70 years. This was punishment that God put on the Jews. And they went to Babylon where they were exiled for up to 70 years. And then they came back. But not all of them came back. A lot of them stayed there. A lot of them had been born there. And they stayed in Babylon. And there arose a great community of Jewish people that lived in Babylonia. They made it their home and we have great literature, great biblical literature that came out of the Babylonian area. The Babylonian Talmud is, is sacred amongst Jewish writings, explaining the Torah and the Mishnah which explains it. It's a great writing. They were scholars studying the word of God. Because these people had been exiled. They'd been punished for not following God. They'd been punished for doing things their own way. And they decided it is vital to us to study God's word. And so when this star rose in the sky that they'd never seen before, they knew that passage in Numbers 24. They knew that there was a star that was going to rise. And they said, this must be a sign from God because we have never seen that before. And they decided to follow a star. They got on their camels 900 miles. Now we jump on an airplane, that's what? An hour and a half maybe? It took them weeks, months to travel across that desert to come to Jerusalem. And they came to Jerusalem. Matthew loved this story about these magi who followed the star. And he puts it in there, I think, because he understands that it's our story. Because we are all travelers. We're all seekers. We're all seeking something. Everybody is looking for I don't know, love, acceptance, purpose, meaning, fulfillment. We're looking for something, happiness. These magi were looking for God's deliverance. And they saw the star rise. 
We see that in order to find Jesus, we're going to need some directions. And God is happy to give them to us. The story of the wise men shows how to find Jesus. The star, it was a sign to the magi to capture their attention, to lead them out of their land, to lead them to a place where they knew that this star, this king, this scepter would arise. And they traveled all the way to Jerusalem because they knew that was the seat of Israel. They knew that was the place to go. The king was living in Jerusalem. And so they went to see the king. They started asking, where's, where's the king? Where's the king? And they said, well, he lives in that palace right over there. He said, no, not that king. The new king, the one that's been born to us. The savior of Israel. Oh, oh, be careful what you say. Because you know who was king in those days? It was Herod, that's right. And Herod was the type of king, they said it was safer to be one of Herod's dogs than it was to be one of his sons. Because Herod was the type of guy who thought, if my son grows up, he might replace me on the throne, so I'm going to kill him now. That's the type of man Herod was. Herod was the one who, when his wife, whom he deeply loved, Miriam was her name, she was related to another king, and she thought, he got the idea in his head, my beloved is related to that other king, and maybe he will take advantage of her to take advantage of me, and she'll usurp my throne. He had her killed. The love of his life. That's the type of man Herod was. And so these wise men, these magi, they're not so wise here, because they're getting, they could be killed in a moment. If Herod felt threatened, and they were asking around, where is this king that was born? Herod heard about it, and he said, uh, king, excuse me? So he brought in all of his wise men, all of his counselors, all of his scholars. They said, you get down here, you find out where this king is. We're going to take care of business. You tell me where he's at. And they said, here's the passage. Out of Micah says that out of you, Bethlehem, a ruler will rise, and he'll be a king forever. And so they told the wise men, Bethlehem. You see, the star was the first sign that led them to Jesus, but they couldn't find Jesus without the scriptures. The scriptures helped them to see the star and to know that it was a special sign from God, they followed the star, but they couldn't find Jesus without going back to the word. And doesn't that tell us something? It's imperative that we honor the word of God the way he meant for us to honor it. He gave it to us as a revelation of who he is, a picture of who he is. He gave it to us as a manual for life, something that helps us to find that fulfillment, to find that reason, to find that purpose that he meant for us to live. And so he says, Go to my word, I have given this to you as a gift. I hear a lot of times people say today, you know, I'm spiritual. Have you heard that? I don't need to go to church. I don't need to study this old dusty book. I don't need, I'm hmm, in contact with the spiritual world and and I see the Spirit wherever I go, and the Spirit lives in the trees and in the mountains. And who is with us? We were over at, um, it was, remember going, going away party for the McMahons? We were having a picnic out in the park. And the guy came along with this big horn thing. He, he played music to each of the trees. Went to every tree. You remember that? He said, what are you doing? He says, Speaking to the spirit of the trees. This helps them to thrive and to be healthy and strong. So he'd play his little tune to the trees. I thought, good on you, man. I hope that works for you. That's not the spiritual world that God gives us the picture of. He says, come back to my word, what I've given you. I have shown you a path. 
the wise men were able to see the star and connect it to scripture. They got to Jerusalem. They said, where is this child that was born? And they went back to the word. Let's look in the word that God has given us. What does he say about it? Because we know that we can trust him. We know that he is trustworthy. He has shown his faithfulness through all generations. And if we watch him, he will lead us. And he will lead us to Jesus. The scripture, the star got them moving. The scripture told them where Jesus was. Being spiritual was not enough. We trust our own hearts sometimes, but our hearts, Proverbs says, are deceptive above all, above all things. We are good. Well, I'm good. I don't know if you're good. But I'm good at deceiving myself. I can make excuses better than anyone and think that I'm truthful in it. Have you ever done that? Only to find out later that maybe you weren't. We're good at making excuses. Well, I did this because they did that, and that was justified because they did that, and because they did this. I could do this, and, and I feel very secure in my deceptions. But the Bible tells me something different when I go to God's word. He says, you need to be above all that. You need to follow my ways and not yours. Your heart is deceptive, and what you think and feel may not be correct because as Paul says we are not fighting a struggle we're not fighting a fight against flesh and blood we are fighting a fight against Satan and his schemes and his lies against us we're fighting a struggle against the powers of darkness in the, in the heavenly places there is a spiritual world all around us that wants to steal kill and destroy what God has given us and promised to us and the joy he wants us to experience and sometimes I get trapped in following the deception that Satan puts before me. And I miss out on the good things that God has planned. And so I need to go back to the word. I need to see who he is and I need to see what his plan is and not my own. But it's a little scary to see what God's plan is. Because sometimes he asks us, of, of, asks of us some things we are not ready to give. He asks of sacrifice. He asks of putting others before ourselves. He asks of counting the needs of others as more important than my own. He asks me to be like him. And how was Jesus? How would you know what Jesus was like? Well, you go to church, dog, that's what you do. But I tell you what, church isn't enough. We need to be people of the word. Because here God gives us this picture of who he is. He has shown us who he is through all creation. He has reached out to each of us so we can know his story. He has gone to great lengths to show us his presence and his purpose. The wise men saw a star in the sky. What's the last miracle you saw? Think about it for a minute. Has anybody seen a miracle today? Did you know that the sun coming up was a miracle? Did anybody see a tree on your way here? You just blew right past it, can't you be? I mean, you get in your car and... Nobody can pass a tree faster than we can. We can. Man, we can get right past it. But if you stop, you look at that tree, you take a leaf, you look at the cell structure, you look at how it works, you get down into the, the molecules of that, it is a miracle. And nobody understands how it all works. They can say, oh, this does this and this and this, but why it does that, how it does it, there are miracles happening around us all the time if we open our eyes to what God is doing. I've asked people to do this. You, can you do that? Everybody do this. <clears throat> You're not all doing it. <laughs> Just like that. Do you know what it takes to do that? 
It is a miracle that that can even happen. Your brain and the synapses and the chemical connections and the electrical connections have to happen, the feed, feedback and the commands. and It just is a miracle when you start studying how you can do that. And that's so simple. And God says, look around you. Don't miss the wonder of what I'm doing. Take time, be still, and know that I am God, and come to my word, and find out who I am really. And we see what God is like. We see that God is the one who, who while we were still sinners, he sent his son to die for us. We see this, this suffering servant who came to, be, to serve and not to be served. We see this one who gave him to give his life a ransom to many, but we also see one who said, I'm coming back. And when I come back, I'm bringing a sword. Because I am God and I have a plan. And I am not a God to be mocked. I am not a God to be taken frivolous. <laughs> yes, that word. With frivolity. How about that? I am not a God to be taken for granted. And so this Jesus, this little baby in a manger, meek and mild, is the God of all creation who promised he's coming back. God uses every possible means to communicate to us a lot of times we just drive right past them. We miss them all together because we get used to the miracles that are going on in this world. And we think that the miracles that are happening around us become our normal things. We think that this life here in the United States is normal. But when you travel around to different places in the world, you find out we are living in Disneyland. That this is not normal for the rest of the world. God has blessed us, but sometimes we're blind to it. Not everybody from Babylon followed the star. Just the wise men. I think that's why they were called wise. Because they could see something and they interpret that and say, this was God's sign. Let's go find out what it means. For 900 miles across the desert, they followed that star. They got to Jerusalem. They said, where is this child? They found it was in Bethlehem and they went to Bethlehem and they found the child. They worshipped him there. As the king, as the mighty ruler that was rising to hold the scepter in his hand. And then they went back another way. They went back another way because they were warned in a dream that Herod was going to do something bad, which, which was not a surprise. And some people say that the word that, that Matthew used, that said they went back another way, is the same type of word he uses when he talks about like living in the narrow way. It's a type of life. It's not just a direction down a path or a road. It's not just another heading on the compass. Sometimes it's used as a whole way of life. And it's been suggested that after meeting Jesus, even as a child, that they went back changed, living another way. It's been said, you cannot come into the presence of God and go away unchanged. You cannot meet him and stay the same. That when God comes into our lives, when we see him, when we open our eyes finally and we see him for who he is, our lives are forever changed. I know some of you ex have experienced that. I know a lot of you have experienced that. And yet sometimes it grows cool. We remember those times on the mountaintop where we were experiencing God and we said, Oh Lord God, I never knew you like this. This is amazing. We go to camp. We go to retreats. We go to something and we're touched by the presence of God. And then we get back to real life. And all that kind of fades away. 
and God calls us to remember the star. Mark, Luke, John, they didn't put in the story about the star. Matthew put it in there because he said, I want you to remember, he was writing to a Jewish audience who knew the scriptures. He said, I want you to remember, this was what God planned. This was from his hand from the very beginning. He prophesied about this many years ago, and there were just a few who saw it. Where were you? Don't close your eyes to what God is doing. We're going to sing a song that says, God is mighty to save. He is powerful to do things that he wants to do and he can accomplish it, but he asks us to join him in this. He says, I am mighty to save, I am powerful to save, and I want to save, and I will save, but I won't do it against your will. I'm calling you, Jesus says, to turn your life over to me, to put your faith in me, to come to me saying, I have nothing to bring you. I come as a broken sinner. I come to you as somebody who, who needs, not somebody who can offer, but somebody who needs your, your care, your forgiveness, your cleansing, your power, your, your wisdom. I need it. And we turn our lives over and we trust him because he has shown himself to be faithful. He has shown himself to be trustworthy. He has shown himself to be able and capable and willing to fill us, to live in us, and to do greater things through us than he, we can ask or imagine. He's shown himself that way. So he says, now trust me. Put yourself in my hands. Die to yourself. Be baptized into Christ so you can walk a brand new life filled with his spirit covered by his Paul says it so beautifully he says for everybody who's been baptized into Christ has been clothed with Christ so we walk he is mighty he is powerful to clothe us with his son so that when God looks at us he doesn't see all the warts and the pimples and all the sin and all the stuff he sees the beautiful clothes that we're clothed with his very own son and he says, that's my child. So we're going to sing this song, He is Mighty to Save. And if you're ready to give your life to him, we want to say, come down here and let's take care of that. Let's give your life, our lives, to God. We'll be baptized into him today. If you need to be seeking him in prayer, he listens to our prayers. He hears our prayers. He answers our prayers. And our elders are standing in the back saying, let's go to God and pray. Whatever is on your heart that you need to take before the Lord, we are here as a family of the leaders of the church to seek God's will. If you're ready to do that, let's do that while we stand and sing this song. <clears throat> Everyone needs compassion.